the sounds of the sea, the wind in my hair and Morlings Golf again for the Legends Tour golfers. This week we're back in Cornwall and it can only be at one place. It's Travos Golf and Country Club. <laughs> What an absolutely amazing place this is to play golf. And the legends are here for the Farm Foods European Legend Links Championship hosted by Mr. Ian Woosnam, who is here to enjoy himself on top of his ceremonial duties. Yeah, everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. I'm enjoying myself. My partners are enjoying them. Sponsors are enjoying themselves. We had a great, last, a great night last night. All good so far. And we'll hear more from Mr. Woosnam a little later in the show. Now, we'll go from him, one of the most experienced members on tour, to some of its newest recruits. One of them has made quite the impression since his debut last week, and the other is hoping to emulate his old tour chum. Richard Green teed it up at the Jersey Legends event for the first time and won. Simon Kahn is a multiple European Tour winner and claimed the flagship BMW PGA Championship back in 2010. The two were paired with each other in the opening rounds and we got them together earlier in the week. You're now 50, you're here. Welcome, I didn't know you had the skills. <laughs> is that you make that? Yeah, I did. Yourself, I did. <laughs> no way. Yeah, so, so you're finally out here. Literally 50 today, so I timed it perfectly, yeah. It would have been lovely to play last week in Jersey, but uh, it's the only time you're happy about getting older, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, hopefully I can uh, emulate you last week. So you, you enjoyed yeah, it? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was uh, really nice to come back out and see some guys that I, you know, we started with all those years ago and, and uh, and come out and play some good golf on a, on, a, on a great golf course. Did you feel the adrenaline back nine, like yeah, coming oh, yeah. down the stretch? Yeah. yeah, it was it was exactly the same. You work so much, you know, throughout your career on on gaining trust in your golf game, and mm. you know you you know you've worked a lot, pretty hard on swing, yeah. and and you and you kind of work on those things to get them really right, so that when pressure comes, yeah, it's it's there. And I was really fortunate. What have you been doing? Been coaching some young, younger players and uh, people who are trying to make it. Mm. I sort of, they resonate with me because, you know, I didn't get my car till I was 28, 29. So it's almost like I quite like the people who've got to work, work their heart, you know, you know, work mm. their way through the sort of ranks, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah. I've enjoyed it, but there's always been that in the back of my mind that I've got to, you know, I want, I want to start playing again. So is there anything from last week that you? could give me advice on like how it was to be competing again or just being out playing yeah. again on the on the Legends Tour. First tee shot was really nervous, got through it, hit some, started hitting some good shots and then that conf confidence level sort of rose and you start enjoying yourself so yeah. all, all I could say out of you know for you to, to do this week is to just, just enjoy yeah. being back out there again. So how much are you looking forward to it? How much are you how are you feeling about it? I still love the game. You know, some people, some players sort of finish and they're like, that's it, I'm, I've, I'm done. But I still love, I still yeah. love golf. I still love trying to improve and get better. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, mate. Mm, good, good stuff. Well, let's find out how those two and others got on, shall we, with a bit of first and second round action from here at Travos with Richard Kaufman and Warren Humphreys. Thanks, Georgie. A stunning setting on the Cornwall coastline. We'll start with the new boys then, Warren, and neither really able to make an impact. No, not quite showing the brilliance of last week. Richard Green round in 72 and 74. And Simon Khan unable to shake off that competitive rust off the pace at six over par after two days. But the man Richard Green beat in the playoff in Jersey last week was able to carry on his fine form. The former Open champion Paul Laurie setting the pace on day one with eight birdies and an eagle in an eight under par 64. Paul Laurie. Hello. You've had a pretty nice first day here. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, eight under. Played nicely. Had a double as well for eight under. So I kind of will keep going and see how we get on. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I wasn't enjoying it for a while, but you know, kind of the last few weeks have been better. Good. Good luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. That 64 shot in scorable conditions, but it got a lot windier on day two. 
It certainly did, and take the Frenchman Christian Surveyor off to a fast start with a 65 in round one, with an eagle two on the par four six. But in the blustery conditions, the next day he had to dig deep and rely on some nifty scrambling for his round of 73 and a six under par total. Decent last day saw Paul Streeter slip into the top 20 at the Jersey Legends last week, and he started well with a bogey free 67 here. At one point, thanks to touches like this on the green, he got himself to the top of the leaderboard in round two. A 70 in the end left Streeter in second place. Paul Laurie has an enviable record for good golf in bad weather. The Open Championship of 99 proved that. The average score on day two was four over par. Laurie's second round score of 71 with four birdies and just three bogeys was simply terrific golf. He's seven under par for the par fives, three under for the par fours this week. So it's not surprising he tops the leaderboard. Indeed it is. So Paul Laurie out in front by two over Streeter, but Laurie not the only Scotsman up there. Regler and partner Legends winner Ewan McIntosh in a tie for fourth with senior Open champ Stephen Dodd. Before we head into final round action, let's learn a bit more about this golf course. I caught up with former Ryder Cup player Peter Baker. It's a proper links course and what I mean by that is you have to play all the shots, all the clubs and uh, it does change quickly around here with the wind and it's firm and fast and that's what that's what you want as a links course, it's a challenging test and uh, you know you can make birdies out here but you can certainly make plenty of bogeys. So I was going to say what does it take to win this? I, th I think really I think it's keep, keeping the high numbers off your, off your scorecard if you sort of get into trouble and you just, you know, you get out of it with a bogey rather than a double bogey, that's a big, big difference. You can f you feel like you can claw that back a little bit, but once you start taking higher numbers, uh, yeah, life gets difficult. Well, the weather is definitely more autumnal than summery, and the whole field are out now, uh, out in the hope that they will avoid a very heavy rain that's forecast later today. Paul Laurie is your leader with a two-shot lead. Let's get more from your commentary team on our final round action with Richard and Warren. Yes, Paul Laurie, the man to catch, and the chasing pack knew that wouldn't be easy. And maybe they needed a bit of luck along the way. Gary Evans knew the best way of stopping this putt was for it to find the hole. It did. In for a birdie two at the third, and Evans up to three under par. A couple of 70s so far from Simon Brown in his search for Legends Tour title number four. A par at the first, and Sneaking in a birdie here at the second, sending Brown to five under par. So conditions today, Warren, maybe not quite as tough as yesterday, but still tricky enough. Well, it's uh, certainly windy out there. You can see how the players wrapped up. Waterproofs on. That lovely smooth swing from Paul Laurie. That's his second shot to the first hole. Coming downhill, not quite up onto the top plateau, but it's got a chance for an early birdie. Yeah, I think he expected that one just to release a little bit. But solid enough start from Paul Laurie. From one Scott to another, you and McIntosh a hole ahead. Like the way last week he was saying, I don't like windy conditions, I must Scott but I'm not a fan of it being windy and tough and I'm not a great links player, but here he is in contention. And that shot right over the top of the flag stick. Well, he managed five birdies in his first eight holes yesterday. Imagine if he did like links golf. Long putt then for Streeter on the opening hole, just leaving it a little shy, but that'll be a certain par four to start. Love the sound of the seagulls on this Harry Colt design. Nearly 100 years old now, this golf course. Macintosh. Oh, just needed hitting. Frustrating. But it's a lovely place to be, even if you have to wrap up today. Legends Tour first came here in 2019. Yeah, Paul Laurie up the little tier here so has to be bold and that's a pretty good start when you're leading a tournament and you get off to a nice par on the opening hole good drive good second lag it stone dead just about the perfect start starts at nine under par what sort of score do you think would be good enough today 
Oh, I think if he shoots around par, he'd be more than happy. It'd be very tough for the chasing pack to catch him. They'd have to shoot something very low. There were only two sub-70 scores yesterday. Oh, Christian Severe. Well, it's tricky in the wind, but I think that was uh, just misjudged by the Frenchman. Gary Evans followed that birdie the third with another at the fourth, but it's still a two-shot lead at the top for overnight leader Paul Laurie at the Farm Foods European Legends Links Championship in Cornwall. Before we get to the action, I said we would hear from our host again. Ian Woosnam was kind enough recently to let us into his home in Jersey. Here's what happened. I want to look back to the start of your career as a pro and how you felt, how hard it was, or how you felt about your game when you started to play around professionals and big tournaments. I remember telling my dad I was going to turn professional and uh, play golf and. He always supported any of his children and he always said because he wanted to be a professional boxer and his parents wouldn't let him do that. So he, and he said if any of his kids wanted to be any good at any sport, he would support them. So basically I set off in the dormobile van he gave me and took off and onto the tour. Now this is a port decanter. Okay. So when it goes around the table, you can't put it down. So you have to finish it. I just traveled everywhere in that van. I'd go from Nairn to Milan, I, I went everywhere to Spain, Portugal, you name it, and I uh, had some great times in there. And you know, I used to park it on the practice ground and practice and practice and practice. And uh, you know, I guess that's what I was learning my trade. My dad said to me, you know, golf is like an apprenticeship. You know, you need to do, do your five years and give yourself a chance. And basically, that's how long it took me. This is when I was in 2006. I give the, you know, being a, doing something for Ireland. So we did the three leaf clover. Should have done the four, we didn't need Should have done four leaf clover, but three was good enough. What changed that made you from a good golfer into a great golfer? I remember reading about Ben Organ saying he, he used to hit four bad shots around him and he accepted it, but he tried to make the best of them bad shots. I remember playing with Seve and first time and we played nine holes and I looked at the score and I'm 35 and Seve's 34. And Seve's missed seven greens and hit two. And he was two under par and I thought, this is, you know, this is, this is how, there's no pictures on the scorecard. And that's when, again, that gave me the confidence to go ahead again. I think this is the captain, I can say it's captain. No, assistant captain, that one, that's when I was assistant captain. You were also part of an extraordinary generation of European golfers that we'd look at with great admiration, great fondness, for some of them great memories because they're you know, no longer here. What's it like being part of that group of golfers that changed European golf? It took me a while to get as good as them, but I got there eventually. And uh, yeah, I think it's like you're playing against each other each week and you're sort of like, I'm gonna beat you. I'm, you know, you're always challenged against them. And if you have that competitiveness in players, you know, they make you stronger. And I think then we, you know, we had such a great group and then, you know, eventually, you know, they all started winning majors and, you know, I got to the stage that I hadn't won a major and eventually got there. I, I don't really look too back, I always look forward usually. Tell me about the, the final part, the part you had to win at Augusta. I said to myself, well, if I miss this part, I'm still in a playoff and I could still win the Masters and trying to keep calm and, uh, you know, it just had that, you know, you, when you were a kid and you were at your local golf club, you're on the putting green at Slanamonic where we used to play, or Oswald Street, and you used to be, well, I'm Gary Player, I'm Jack Nicholas, you know, Arnold Palmer, you know, and here you are, 35 years later, you got, or 30 years later, you got the, ch the chance to do this, you know what I mean? And there I was, and fortunately it went in for me. It's great having all the memories and all these trophies. And it really was a treat to spend some time with Ian in his own home. So thank you to him and Mrs. Woozy. Let's get back to the action. From a Welsh major champion to a Welsh senior major champion. 
Just weeks away from his defence at Glen Eagles at the Senior Open. Stephen Dodd looking in good nick. This stunning approach at the par 5 fourth led to an eagle that took Dodd to seven under par. And after making his par at the first, this was just a beautiful pitch into the second for Paul Laurie. And he would make the tap in for his first birdie of the day. Perfect start for the leader. He's now 10 under. Yeah, that birdie from Laurie's extended his lead to three shots. Dodd's eagle at the second has taken him into a tie for second alongside Paul Streeter. Into the wind here at the par 5 fourth hole. 487 yards, dog legs from right to left. Bunkers down the left side, so a strong drawn shot required to gain as much distance as possible. And the trackman graphic clearly showing Laurie trying to keep the ball down in the wind with the apex of the ball's flight just 92 feet. Normally it would be above 100. That carry 235 yards, not enough to carry those bunkers down the left side. You normally expect another 30 yards in good weather but it still leaves him this fairway wood for his second shot off a slight upslope and there's that lovely rhythm of his never changed over the years and that's an absolute belter what a second shot setting up the eagle chance and a perfectly played hole so far yeah he doesn't look in the mood does he to relinquish that lead now Streeter, whose two legend wins came in his rookie season in 2018. <laughs> Not bad either. That's two wonderful shots. Uh, you're Macintosh. You can see how deep some of the bunkers are and the humps and hollows. Actually, not in sand there, just pitching it up Oof, and catching a piece of the hole there. Pretty good shot. Now that'll leave him a testy little left or righter. So Paul Laurie, first to go with his eagle chance. And listen to that wind. That's pretty well judged. Last week's winner, Richard Green, closed with a 73. Unfortunately, Simon Khan had to withdraw after six holes of his final round. Murray, though, another birdie, 11 under now. And he looks very much in control, taking it in his stride as we go and see Dot here at the fifth. Outside birdie chance down the slope. A little bit of watery shadow there. He's got a Put across and oh gee and that's about as excited as Stephen Dodd ever gets yeah it was a wonderful win for him though wasn't it last summer now this would make it interesting for oh it's not threatening not threatening at all from Paul Streeter yeah, he seemed to get an early bit of bobble there didn't strike it quite the way that he wanted which is probably why it's come up so shy Good up and down. McIntosh trying to complete the job here. Never easy in strong wind, these little putts from three and four feet. But he made that look very easy. Nicely done. Good up and down. Well, if the chasing pack thought they might get a helping hand from Paul Laurie, they can think again. The Scotsman with two unanswered birdies in his first four holes, still in charge. Plenty to play for though, especially for those just starting out in Legends Tour life. Michael Johnson, one of this season's rookies, and a chip and a part at the par 5 ninth for birdie, saw him out in 34, three under par. Back to the eighth, the defending champion Chris Williams, and he continued to show his love affair with Travaux's golf and country club. This outrageous Yay! birdie taking him to four under and into the top 10. Don't give me any three footers, whatever you do. Seem happy enough with that. Drop shot from Paul Street at the fifth means Laurie now with a solid four shot lead. Simon Brown up to seven under in a three way share for second place. The leader on his way to the ninth. That's par five for 92 yards. Plenty of bunkers down the fairway for the players to worry about. Wind today's down and slightly off the right hand side. 
as they plow up to a plateau green, very steep at the entrance to the green. Laurie aiming it down the right side of the fairway, trying to bring it back. It looks like he's got a lot more height than that. You can see 100 feet, so getting a lot more carry. 264 yards, that's 35 yards further than he did back on the fourth. So good numbers for Laurie. Par threes here are very strong. This is the 11th, 221 yards. And you can see trouble short, those humps and hollows. Green rays, bunkers down the left side. The strong wind off the right. McIntosh trying to hold this one up into the breeze. Yeah, the flag's on the bottom level here today. By the way, did I say breeze? I didn't mean breeze. Strong wind. Look at that flag. That's really fluttering. No easy conditions out there today for the boys. That's going to be a tough part he's got coming up as well. Let's see what Streeter can do here on the ninth. Very deep bunkers down the right. And not quite the same ball speed there as Paul Laurie earlier on, so that's not going to carry quite as far. Well, talking of Paul Laurie, I think Georgie's caught up oh, with him. Oh, hello. Isn't uh, this lovely? Isn't it? Yeah, I was, lovely. Well, I was going to say, it looks kind of better than yesterday, but I suspect it's as difficult, isn't it? Uh, it's a little easier. I don't think the wind's quite as strong, uh, but as you can see, it's still blowing quite a bit. Um, it's been a decent start. I've played some nice golf. I've not made any mistakes, which when you're ahead, that's what you've got to do. And the wind, you've got to keep it in play. Do you mind being the target everyone's chasing? No, because it means you're playing well and it means you're in front. Uh, whether you're behind or whether you're in front doesn't really matter. My job is to control me. That's all I can do. If, if someone has a good score, there's nothing I can do about that. Good luck. All right, thank you. thank you. Talking like a major champion, a winner of seven other DP World Tour titles. He knows how to get it done, Warren. Oh, he certainly does, and he's tough when he's in front. As we go back to McIntosh, you can see down the little plateau here, left to right braking. Go on, get down that slope. Uh, not too bad. He'll be more than happy with making his par three here today on the 11th. It's a great story, isn't it? You and McIntosh, oldest man to win the Scottish Amateur, and now really settling into Legends Tour life. Yeah, amazing that he gave it up for 15 years. As we go back to Laurie's second shot here to the par five ninth. Need some height on this to get up to the plateau green. Oh, and he's pitched that right on the front edge and once again spot on for accuracy little unlucky just to run through the back edge but two very good shots yeah couldn't have done much better there we saw Paul Streeter go right off the tee had to lay up so this is third shot now into this par five oh, he got some spin there controlled the length of the shot nicely might have liked it a little bit closer but he's still got a birdie opportunity and there are birdies out there despite the strong winds eight already from michael jonson today although he has bogeyed his last two holes that's not going to be birdie number nine though well it's an eagle putt but i think he'd be delighted to get down in two here from the back of the ninth green it's in very good shape. Oh, and it caught a piece of the hole. It's a little bit chilly for the spectators, but they're enjoying the action. Paul Streeter trying to keep a pace and unable to make his birdie. So opportunity coming up for Paul Laurie to stretch even further away. and he's a tough cookie anyone who wins two singles in Ryder Cup matches you know that they're a bit of a handful and of course he played at Brookline and Medina and there's another birdie halfway through this final round of the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship and there looks no stopping Paul Laurie now five shots in front not the only one enjoying being on the lead
perfect weather for surfing the waves on the Cornwall coast. Things a little trickier for the players at the Farm Foods European Legends Link Championship. But after a bogey at the 11th, Gary Evans bounced back with a birdie at the 13th. Three under for his round, five under overall, and heading for his best finish on the Legends Tour since 2019. Same hole, same result for Simon Brown. And with another birdie to come at the 14th, the Englishman was an impressive four under for his final round and into second place. And it very much seemed like it was a chase for second given the mood of leader Paul Laurie. Although after this birdie at the 10th, he did drop a shot for the first time in the final round at the 12th hole. But still, a comfortable four shot lead for the 53 year old Scott at 12 under par. Christian Severe slipping down now to a share of ninth place. So as they move to the 13th, 569 yards, longest of the par fives here. And you can see bunkers await any errant tee shot, and they're pretty deep. You certainly don't want to be in those. And obviously, players need to avoid the ditch down the left side here. So the two bunkers on the right very much in play. And in fact, that far bunker on that right side has caught out Paul Laurie and he's got an absolute horror lie. He's doing well to get it on the green from here. Caught it nicely up in the air using a bit of height and that is not a bad shot. I think you'd take that in the circumstances. Okay, nicely played from Paul Laurie. Father's Day today and he's got his uh, son there, Michael, on the bag. He's now graduated from Stirling University. Craig was on the bag last week. A bit of sibling rivalry maybe going, going to be going on there if Paul especially can get the win today. Nothing like keeping it in the family though. That's not what Streeter was expecting. He would have liked to have got a little bit closer than that, especially using the putter from off the green. What a lovely backdrop it is. Janssen on the 18th here. He was six under for this final round with three holes to play. A couple of bogeys though. Wide stance here for Christian Severe, obviously trying to make a good base for himself so he doesn't get buffeted in the wind. How big a backswing was that? Gosh. That's like playing on the Himalayas at St Andrews, where the 150th Open Championship will be played this year. Now, let's to avoid another drop shot. Oh, that's a pity. He was going so well. Still a good round, uh, a 69, but it promised to be a little lower for Jonsson than that. Finishes at four under par. Still a good round today. Anything sub 70 is a terrific score. All right. Birdie chance here at the 13th, but he's got to hit it pretty firmly to get up that plateau. Ooh, that's a double breaker and a half, isn't it? Pace was good, though. Work to do to save his par. He won't want to be dropping a shot. Give the chasing pack any heart at all. Yeah, he's not won since the 2019 Scottish Senior Open. Streeter to avoid a bogey. And he's suddenly six shots behind. Again, in a strange way, it's never easy to have such a big lead. You don't want to be thinking about protecting it. You've got to keep on playing each shot for what it's worth. Surveyor for his par. Yeah, it's back-to-back -back bogeys. You remember when he was uh, flying on the DP World Tour, Warren? Oh, he won so well at the London Club in the European Open. One of the longest courses we played at that time, and his short game was fantastic. Now, Gary Evans did drop a shot at 15, but this to try and get back to five under. Well done. Yeah, well done. Great to see. He's had his uh, shoulder and injury issues. Murray then at 13. Let's hope it's not an unlucky number for him. He can make this putt for his part. 
he can indeed. He's giving the chasing pack no comfort at all. Well, whistling away, a very relaxed Paul Laurie. He's got them dancing to his tune. He's been in front ever since his day 164. Still remains at the top now by four shots, six holes to play. A wire to wire victory, very much on. And he kept the mistakes out of the way over the next two holes with pars at 14 and 15. Laurie, the name they've been staring at all week at the top of the leaderboard. And no sign that that's going to change before the end at Travaux's Golf and Country Club. They're having a fine day as well, aren't they? They certainly are. That's, that's a pretty good day too for Gary Evans, although he's got this putt for a par at the last. And he knew he was on the walk very early, knew he hadn't hit that hard enough. Yeah, bogey finish round of 70. Another in the house at four under par. But a good week. Paul Hill's there alongside him. Now to the leader at the par 3 16th. 200 yards, but a lot of loft in the hands of Paul Laurie. So launching that one into the air, letting the wind do the work. Just got to keep his focus. Just going to drift off here. Oh, even the sprinkler helping him out. It shows you what uh, Lynx Golf is like. He pitched that one well short of the green. Trundles it way to the back. Chance to catch up with Phil Golding. Tester for his par at the last. Bogey free back nine so far. And that remains the way. Three very consistent days for the five times Legends Tour winner. Under par in all three rounds. Now Streeter going to play a little chip and run here. Ball well outside the back right foot. So really de-lofting the club here. It's just trying to bobble it on the green. Interesting, Paul Laurie was talking this week about before he played in Jersey that if he was going to play the rest of the year, needed to commit, practice plenty, and well, it looks like it's paid off. Nothing spectacular required from him here, and that's tidy enough. Yeah, tidy enough. I've been very impressed with his swing. His transition from the top of the swing down into the ball today in these difficult conditions has been absolutely fantastic. Excellent technique he's shown. As we see, Streeter would have hoped to have got it closer with the chip shot. So this is for his par. So another one slips for him. Yeah, back to six under now for Streeter. Needed a hot putter if he was going to have any chance of reeling in Paul Laurie. These aren't the easiest in these conditions. No, certainly not. You've really got to stay very steady and hope that the wind doesn't buffet the club offline. Another good strike right out of the middle of the putter. Getting closer. The drop shot from Simon Brown means it's now a five shot lead that Paul Laurie enjoys. After his runner up finish in Jersey last week, he looks set to go one better this time at the Farm Foods European Legends Links Championship. Legends Tour in the west of England on the stunning coastline of Padstow where we've reached the closing stages of the Farm Foods European Legends links and as at the start of the day it's Paul Laurie in charge the Scotsman with a five shot lead with two holes to play and all he really needs to do now is keep the ball on the short grass as we take a look at the 17th for 28 yards just Maybe a three wood off the tee for Paul Laurie will be sufficient. You certainly don't want to be in those bunkers down the right hand side. That would be a no no. And it's indeed a three wood for Laurie. 
watch this transition from backswing to downswing. Smooth as ever, and he's absolutely drilled that one. Hardly got it off the ground, trying to keep it as low as possible, and just 52 feet height-wise. That is very low. Yeah, that was impressive. Race on for second place. Tied second right now with you and McIntosh, Simon Brown. Oh, had a look. Back to 17 and Streeter now, he's out with the driver. Aiming a long way left, trying to play the big cut shot by the looks of it. And that went a lot higher in the sky than Lorry. Getting a little bit of help from the ground. That's in good shape. Good tee shot. Over at 17. To the green and Macintosh. So many different putting styles these days. Left hand below right for Macintosh. There's all sorts of double handed grips, pencil grips. So much more inventive these days both on the main tour, the Legends tour, any tour. Well, he's uh, benefited from playing on the Tartan tour as well in the last few years, which was set up by Paul Laurie himself. Round to close out his round, nicely done. Yeah, that's the clubhouse lead right now, seven under par. And as you were suggesting earlier, anything in the 60s is a, a good score today. We've had a 66 from Philip Archer. That's the low round of the day. Yeah, that's an amazing score. 66 on a day like today as we see Laurie plays second to the 17th. He really has controlled his ball flight very well today. A lot of sensible shots. Attacked when he's needed to. Been a little bit defensive when he's had to. And safely on. That's all he needs right now. Streeter again aiming this one a little left, trying to hold this one up. Good, neat, efficient swing. Oh, and an excellent result right at the flag. Now, Macintosh. Hard to believe it's midsummer, isn't it? Which you see them with so many waterproofs on and bobble hats, trying to keep themselves warm. But that's not stopped Macintosh from playing a beauty there. Not dropped a shot today either. No, that's really good golf. Laurie, all he needs to do is cozy this one down to the hole, not stress himself out too much. I'll leave himself a little work to do. I think he's got enough wriggle room. Oh, I think so. However, for Streeter, he'd love to make this. Oh, it'd be worth much gold at this stage of the tournament. Yeah, very good. Gets to seven under into a share a second with Brown and McIntosh. Got one at last. But it might not be in a share a second for long if McIntosh can roll this one in at the last. He's had quite a fantastic season, hasn't he? Great start, and that's a nice way to finish the round. Yeah, he's had a win, a third, and maybe a second here, which would take him to the top of the Legends Tour Order of Merit. Yeah, that's not bad. He's had a one, two, and a three. Lorry. Here for his par on 17. Yeah, good speed into the hole. Yeah, no worries for him. He's looked very relaxed, you've got to say, all week. Never, ever fully happy with his game, mind you. Well, he should be relaxed with that scenario. Four-shot lead to take down the last. It's been a masterclass of front running from the 1999 Open champion. One hole to go. And a chance to enjoy playing the last hole knowing you've got this in the bag yeah, yeah, doesn't look at that too long does he nice 
club head speed there may be a little lower than he shown earlier in the day when he got it up to 110 miles an hour but just a nice soft drive down the last exactly what you need see it's good par four 423 yards no real problems for the players with the tee shot you would think today coming up to that green playing a little uphill plenty of bunkers short of the green for the players to worry about and of course it would be ideal if they can keep it a little left of the flag well eight under for a Macintosh so birdie needed down the last for Streeter to match that ball a little bit above his feet here Oh, come on down. Come on. Mm, that's a little unlucky. Sounded like a game show there for a minute. <laughs> well, the price wasn't right for him there, was it? Uh, not quite. He's going to leave himself an awkward third. That is for sure. Uh, fun chance to see the rhythm of this swing from Laurie. little grimace on the face as he left that right as well he has a little but that's okay no real problems be a little annoyed as that runs to the front of the green but he's got plenty of shots in hand he can enjoy the walk up to the 18th he can he can even take five putts from there should he wish it's been a terrific performance really has been a, a pleasure to watch yeah, it's never easy being a, a front runner going out in these sort of conditions certainly oh, he's given that a run weather conditions on that third day absolutely brutal and <laughs> even he can see the funny side of that well I think that's about the first one he's, he's misjudged badly all day in terms of pace yes concentration just going on the final hole just got to let the contours do its work here Yes, I don't think they had much chance of stopping that one short of the hole with such a severe slope to it. Now let's hope Laurie can finish with a par putt here on the last. Well, that's a pity. It, it doesn't matter, of course. Bit of shame to three putt the last. That left to complete the victory. This does matter though. This stage of the game. Streeter now trying to make his par at the last. Oh, he missed it on the high side. Good effort. Yeah, that takes him out of a share of third place. It's been a tough day for Christian Servet. He has had a couple of birdies. But too many drop shots on the car for the Frenchman. Very similar scenario to what happened last week for him unfortunately that's a sixth bogey of the round and I'll slip him out of the top ten yeah, 64 he started with in Jersey 65 he started with here he's got to remember how to do that in the last two rounds yeah no one really putting pressure on Paul Laurie in this final group yeah, well it is hard in these conditions to set at the start. It would be very difficult to go really low on a day like today as we see Streeter hole out for his 73. And Laurie doing the same for his round of 70 from start to finish. Paul Laurie's been in charge at Travaux. A dominant final day. Nobody really got close. That 70 seeing him finish at 11 under par. Nearly three years on from his only other Legends Tour win. And after playoff heartache a week ago, Laurie takes the Farm Foods European Legends Lynx Championship with a three-shot winning margin. It was a uh, Scottish 1-2 on the leaderboard. As it is on the Legends Tour order of merit this time, it's Laurie behind McIntosh. A perfect Father's Day for the champion. I played nice all week, uh, I played nice last week, uh, really you know, the chance to win, that's all you try to do. So when you give yourself a bit of a lead, obviously you've got to just take the emotion out of it and just kind of no ups and no downs, don't get too excited, don't get too angry, especially when the weather's like that, the actually is very important. And just kept going, just kept you know, playing nice, disappointed to three part the last because 
my face pattern this week's been exceptional and then I battled the one at the last which is about which is about right. But no, no, absolutely chuffed with this. In the end, the rain just held off. Paul Norrie, a very popular winner here at Travos. If you want more information, the Legends Tour website is legendstour.com. We'll look forward to seeing you again very soon on the Legends Tour Highlight Show.